Hello to everyone. I am Dr. Jaya. I have decided to make recordings for the practicals that I am, am going to teach. Uh, basically, apart from live briefing, I thought it is also good to have uh, recordings uh, to help you out in understanding the practical since it's going to be done online. Uh, may not be able to have one uh, seamless uh, recording, may need to do it in parts and therefore you have to go through this uh, part by part to understand the briefing altogether. So let's start. This is on preparation of buffer solution and let me get tools to help me to present right so buffer solution you need to understand what's the uh, meaning of uh, buffer and why we need to have buffer being applied for certain uh, use in the laboratory and uh, all the practicals if we were to conduct it physically you will have a pre-practical session but for this practical no pre-practical session and uh, this uh, uh, practical has the learning outcomes where you need to calculate and prepare solutions and uh, this I already given a video uh, video please refer to the video where I have recorded on all the basic calculation like n equals mv1000 and uh, uh, mv over mv you know dilution please have a look at it and then uh, we also look into titration curve meant for buffers which has a very distinctive uh, shape and uh, you will understand uh, some of the things from that graph and then we will look into preparing a number of uh, buffer uh, and uh, we will also look into one buffer where we uh, make two different pH uh, preparations and using this preparation we will understand better about buffer capacity right uh, a bit of principle uh, buffer solution uh, unlike water you put in water uh, acid or you put alkali or base it will immediately change pH but buffer is amazing where you put uh, quite a lot only slight changes uh, take place so buffers are important to resist change of uh, pH and uh, this uh, comes about or rather how to prepare it comes about by uh, normally combining uh, weak acid with its uh, conjugate base or uh, weak base with its conjugated acid so this is how we make uh, buffers i will give you in a while uh, some examples of how to uh, uh, recognize this uh, weak base and its conjugate uh, but uh, first we move on in application of buffers why do we want to make these buffers obviously there must be some application and uh, these are some of the application that I have uh, put in to make you understand maybe you won't understand it now uh, maybe you'll understand as you progress to other courses in biotechnology such as enzyme technology as well as uh, other uh, courses that uh, like bioprocess uh, anything that has enzyme anything that has a uh, protein that need to be sustained in terms of the pH will require buffer so uh, in terms of application enzymes are one of the area where buffer need to be created because enzymes are protein and they have optimum pH so you want to make sure if the optimum pH is 5 
you want to prepare a buffer at five uh, not you know like uh, eight or nine where it doesn't work very well the enzyme so uh, the reason you want to prepare at five at its optimum ph so that the enzyme works the best at that uh, pH and also nothing disturbs uh, in, until got change of pH and may lead to the denaturation, denaturation of the enzyme because it's protein right and then in uh, gel electrophoresis also we tend to have uh, buffers prepared and uh, this uh, for example SDS page where you will later see in enzyme technology course where you need to prepare the uh, a specific uh, pH of a buffer where you would like to ensure the charges of the mixture of protein is becoming uh, having charges uh, rather than uh, neutral uh, we want to have the charge because it then can migrate in the electrophoresis once the current has been started. So that's another reason. And then you also uh, would like to do it in chromatography. Uh, they say it as ion exchange chromatography, where you purposely uh, change the uh, uh, mixture of protein to have also again charges uh, say your column has a positive charge you want to change the mixture of the uh, certain uh, proteins in the mixture to be uh, say negatively charged so if your column is positive your certain proteins are negative so they get attracted they are bound together and then all those who are uh, uh, positive charge will be eluted so it's a way of separation uh, chromatography is to separate therefore you use the buffers to change the uh, charges to be opposite of uh, the that of the column right so that's just an application we now move on to examples of buffers uh, the acetate buffer is a popular choice but uh, back then uh, now uh, there are many other uh, uh, buffers already replaced this acetate buffer but uh, acetate buffer is always a buffer that is popular in studying about buffer okay so you have uh, its weak acid huh? you can't use a strong acid uh, for making buffer it has to be a weak acid as you know acetic acid is a weak acid then you can see the conjugated uh, base of it so you mix both of these then you get acetate buffer and there's a range for it more uh, acidic uh, ph uh, range and then you also have another popular one phosphate buffer this one you can even buy in uh, uh, tablets and uh, it has a different uh, ph in it then you just use it uh, immediately by uh, including how much of water with the tablet and dissolving it so here you can see uh, it has this uh, as the weak acid and also it's a uh, conjugated ba base uh, together and uh, another uh, popular one is trees buffer and it's normally used in uh, STS uh, pH uh, or gel electrophoresis okay uh, later when you learn about SDS pH you will realize that trees buffer is the choice of buffer Okay, right. With that three example, we move on to the Anderson Hasselbalch equation, which is useful in calculating uh, how much of uh, this uh, part here, which is uh, substance concentration of the salt. So the conjugate base you can calculate. Uh, this one, and then you can also uh, calculate the conjugated acid. Once you know these two, then you know how much to be used to mix together to get the buffer. Uh, this all will be known 
values for the buffer say acetate buffer you will have uh, a known value I think it's 4.76 then whatever pH of interest that you want to prepare for the buffer say 4.9 for the acetate buffer okay so looks like these two can be determined then you can start uh, calculating the amount of the uh, salt as well as the uh, weak acid to be uh, used so here we have uh, uh, some of the samples of uh, buffers and also their pka their useful uh, ph range so uh, one thing you have to bear in mind about uh, buffers is they uh, there's a ph range uh, you cannot just uh, you know uh, like some buffer and then use it for all uh, ph range there is a limitation so assuming you would like to have uh, acetate buffer looks like it only works at this uh, ph range say you want uh, a buffer a buffering effect at uh, pH 6 unfortunately you cannot use uh, acetate uh, buffer uh, you must uh, consider using uh, even this also cannot okay let me just uh, remove that and then so which one uh, at 6 you can see a very limited uh, you know choice because uh, between 5.8 to 6.2 uh, don't have oh yeah this one can uh, citric acid so looks like if you want to uh, consider a ph of six then only citric acid uh, buffer can be utilized then you have a problem with citric acid like uh, citric acid buffer you can see got three pka so how do you use this uh, henderson hasselbeck equation if there is a three simple if you are using to calculate for six just uh, use the closest to it uh, nearest uh, pka which is 6.4 not 4.6 uh, 4.76 or 3.13 okay so uh, that's it in terms of uh, introduction into the types of buffer and understanding about the pka as well as the ph range now uh, i go into calculating uh, ph of a buffer uh, the old style okay let's just uh, put it as the old uh, style of uh, calculating uh, the very difficult uh, sometimes uh, uh, complicate uh, the calculation process and also uh, many assumption that you need to uh, use before come to the final answer but uh, you know with internet of things there are ways to calculate it by using uh, calculator online calculators which i will show you in a while okay all right in the example uh, they need to prepare five liters uh, and the uh, molarity is 0.34 with a ph of uh, 4.47 and uh, you are only given two molar of acetic acid and 2.5 molar of uh, uh, potassium hydroxide so how do you prepare uh, by using to these two uh, uh, solutions given to you so this is uh, what's going to be done you are going to use the henderson hasselbeck uh, equation uh, whereby uh, this is the disassociation of uh, the acetate buffer where uh, you will have the hydrogen ion and acetate uh, ion from the acetic acid okay so uh, we need to target in calculating this so how do we do it but when I prepared this uh, calculation I already gone uh, very uh, like a shortcut uh, didn't do all the workings uh, step by step uh, I have jumped a few steps okay so this is the reason uh, I jumped a few steps because I wanted to be shorter in explanation 
So you can see uh, uh, if you already know the pK of acetate buffer is 4.76 so you put it here and then you want to achieve 4.47 as the final uh, pH of your buffer. Therefore uh, you put here and then you uh, work out this equation and then you do NT log using a calculator finally you arrive at 2 okay so and then uh, now you know this means the ratio of uh, uh, this acetic acid over its uh, ion is 2 to 1 and uh, this also means two-thirds of the acetate will be as acetic acid while one third of the rest of the acetate in the form of its uh, ion okay and then uh, the this means if you want to prepare five liters of a buffer you can you know I already taught you you can do the calculation by using uh, n equals of uh, mv over uh, 1000 okay and uh, so you know uh, it's five uh, five liter right okay and then m is 0 0.3 uh, and then over uh, but since you're using five liter no need lah over one uh, okay just uh, okay so this therefore you get 1.5 mole so what does this mean uh, 1.5 uh, mole uh, then you can calculate uh, the two-third uh, from here uh, yeah so you know two-third will be acetic acid so you use you want to achieve this so multiply it you know it's one mole for the acetic acid and then the acetate uh, ion you 1.5 mole multiply by one third uh, again one third is acetic ion right therefore you get uh, these uh, moles that you need to prepare for both the acetic acid and also acetic ion so again more assumption if consider all the acetic ion is originating from the acetic acid then the volume of two mole of acetic acid required can be calculated so again now finally uh, using uh, this formula you want to only calculate this so i hope you can put into how you know uh, i hope you know how i did this calculation by uh, only focusing in calculating the v okay so therefore finally you will know need to get uh, to use 750 ml of 2.5 molar of uh, potassium hydroxide and then do the same for the calculation uh, uh, then you will know acetate ion need 200 ml okay but it doesn't stop there now you know you need 750 ml of uh, potassium uh, hydroxide and 200 ml of uh, uh, acetate uh, uh, what do you call uh, acetic acid so is it uh, done uh, so uh, you need further uh, explanation in the preparation of this uh, buffer in the laboratory itself so there it is explained here to prepare 5 liters of 0.3 molar acetate buffer what you need to do is as you have calculated take the 750 ml of acetic acid uh, mix it with 200 ml of uh, potassium hydroxide and then of course it doesn't make up 5 liter right uh, so you have to use a big uh, volumetric uh, flask have it in the lab uh, it has a cover okay? but it also has a, uh, maybe it has a sign like this okay so uh, you 
put the uh, 750 uh, and then put the 200 okay maybe it only reach up to here what you do next is you add water but don't put until the meniscus where it indicates is 5 liter maybe put it somewhere here okay then what you do is you measure the pH uh, to you'll be surprised you may not get as 4.47 uh, accurately maybe you will get it as uh, 4.6 so what you need to do you add little by little uh, what you need to bring it down uh, you need to bring it to here right so you have to add uh, say sodium hydroxide uh, because you want to oh sorry uh, not sodium hydroxide uh, acid lah sorry you need to add uh, acid okay because it's 4.6 you want to bring it to 4.47 unless uh, if it is uh, 4.3 uh, then don't add acid lah huh? you have to add NOH okay I hope you understand what I'm saying okay basically if it's uh, you know targeted to be lower pH you add uh, uh, base if it's uh, higher like just now 4.6 you had uh, hydrochloric acid okay usually we use uh, one molar of NOH or one molar of uh, hydrochloric acid okay so you keep adding and keep measuring the pH uh, and then hopefully you already achieve the 4.47 target and then uh, what you do is uh, you then make sure say you add add become more ready then what you do is finally you add water to make it go up uh, to become fully at the meniscus and therefore uh, all also is prepared to be 5 liter and that you will achieve your uh, final target of reaching 4.47 and also in terms of uh, uh, the calculation to be accurate okay so that's preparation of buffer in the old style okay uh, uh, for now uh, I I want to take a, a break and make part two so uh, please hold on